and welcome to learn ADS in five minutes. This is tutorial 11 and in this tutorial we'll talk about how to resolve differences between IDL and a vendor library components based circuit. So if you recall in tutorial number 10 uh, we used Murata components and we simulated our circuit and in the results we can see there are some difference between the IDL component results and the Murata component results. Now, we all understand uh, that using vendor library components is in limiting in a, in a manner because the number of choices we get is quite small um, as compared to using an ideal component where we can freely change the values. So if we can do more effective design in using ideal components, uh, we could design our circuits much better. But the question is, if we use ideal components and we end up getting these kind of references, then our effort may not yield the desired you know, result. Now, in order to, to see what's going on and how can we achieve a performance which is close to Murata 1 using the ideal components, and then we can design our circuits better. Right. Now, to understand that, so let me go back to this data display and let me switch off the history so that now Murata component library results is the only one we have on the data display and we will go ahead and switch on the history now. So this trace will become our reference. Now, one of the reason why um, we don't get the same performance is because in our ideal components, we have no loss factor associated. In simple words, what we call as Q factor. And that's why these components re remain like an ideal reactive component. And this is what causes difference between the practical vendor library components. So we'll go ahead and make a copy of our design and here we can use copy cell and let's call this design uh, to understand uh, with Q. Now, while having that name, uh, we'll create another instance on the copy of the design as we did earlier from Murata. So using design with Q, uh, we can go ahead and we replace all these components. So if we scroll through the lumped component library, you will see you have components like cap Q, which includes the Q factor, and similarly we have int Q, which includes the inductor Q factor. Now, if we don't need to manually sit and replace all of them, so I'll show you a couple of ways to do that in ADS very simply. So one of the way is once you remember the keyword of the component, you can edit this reference designator directly, and we can type int Q, which is um, for the or inductor with Q factor. So this way we could replace all the all the components, you know, one by one. However, we can also do a mass swap. For example, I can select all the components which I have, then go to edit, component, swap components. And now with all L components, you can see all reference designator is L and I can just simply type in Q and we can say swap. And all the components automatically get swapped within Q and the properties are pretty much assigned already, except we now need to edit or add or modify the, the property for the new parameters we have in the dialog. So for inductor, I'll go ahead and use Q factor of 15 uh, for all the, all the components we have. Similarly, for these capacitors, because they are only two, I can just simply use the manual process of modifying the reference designated to be cap Q. Now with Kind of inductor, um, we use 15 Q factor for capacitor, 100 or 200 is a reasonable number. If in doubt, you can always refer to the data sheet of these uh, you know, uh, component series, and that gives you an exact data of what Q factor to be used. Now, once we modified our sub design, we can go back to the main design uh, we were working on, and let's disable the Murata you know, subcell. And from the ADS workspace menu, I can just drag and drop uh, design with Q sub network and we can hook it up here with our you know, test bench. And now because history mode is on, when we run simulation, we can notice the performance comparison. And now with our Q factor based components, our response is very close to the Murata components. Now this provides a good flexibility to us to again optimize our circuit in presence of Q factor and still get the best performance possible and then go ahead and use Murata components from the library for suitable value. Well, the question is how do I know what Q factor to be used here? Well, as I said, one step is to use the 
the you know manual from the from the manufacturer you can look at the data sheet another way you can even in ads if you notice the simple test bench here here i just place this murata component and i will put the tech include so netlist include as well now when we run a simple s parameter simulation in the desired frequency range we want to characterize we get a blank data display and ads does have templates so if you go to insert template in data display under em products we do have a template which is used for spiral inductor so we'll use s2 port spiral and using the simple template we have all the equations built in we can see the inductance predicted and remember we are using 39 nano henry component so it is up close to 38 uh, nano henry which is pretty good and if you look at the quality factor curve that is ranging uh, from 5 to approximately 18 or so and i just took an average of something like 15 to be used in our circuit design so if you don't get information from data sheet you can just simply characterize your own components in ads well that's your five minutes understanding differences between ideal and vendor library components look forward to see you in next video thanks for watching